Hi guys, today we're going to start reading Because of Win Dixie by Kate D. Camillo. This happens to be one of my favorite books to read, um, mostly because nothing bad happens to the dog in this story. And um, you know Mrs. Kelly has trouble with those kind of stories, that something sad happens. But this one is a great book. I love, 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 love this. I love to read this. Usually I read it to third or fourth grade. Um, but we're going to start with Because of Winn-Dixie by Kate D. Camilla. Chapter 1. My name is India Opal Baloney, and last summer my daddy, the preacher, sent me to the store for a box of macaroni and cheese, some white rice, and two tomatoes, and I came back with a dog. This is what happened. I walked into the produce section of the Winn-Dixie grocery store to pick out my two tomatoes and I almost bumped right into the store manager. He was standing there all red-faced screaming and waving his arms around. Who let a dog in here? He kept shouting. Who let a dirty dog in here? Well, at first I didn't see a dog. There was just a lot of vegetables rolling around on the floor, tomatoes and onions and green peppers. And there was what seemed like a whole army of Winn-Dixie employees running around waving their arms just the same way the store manager was waving his. And then the dog came running around the corner. He was a big dog and ugly. And he looked like he was having a really good time. His tongue was hanging out and he was wagging his tail and he skittered to a stop and he smiled right at me. I had never before in my life seen a dog smile, but that is what he did. He pulled back his lips and showed me all of his teeth and then he wagged his tail so hard that he knocked some oranges off the display and they went rolling everywhere mixed with the tomatoes, the onions, and the green peppers. The manager screamed, somebody grab that dog. The dog went running over to the manager, wagging his tail and smiling. He stood up on his hind legs. You could tell that all he wanted to do was get face to face with the manager and thank him for the good time he was having in the produce department. But somehow he ended up knocking the manager over and the manager must have been having a bad day because lying there on the floor right in front of everybody, he started to cry. The dog leaned over him real concerned and licked his face. Please, said the manager, somebody call the pound. Wait a minute, I hollered. That's my dog. Don't call the pound. And all the Winn-Dixie employees turned around and looked at me, and I knew I had done something big and maybe stupid too, but I couldn't help it. I couldn't let that dog go to the pound. Here, boy, I said. And the dog, stopped, the dog stopped licking the manager's face and put his ears up in the air, and he looked at me like he was trying to remember where he knew me from. Here, boy, I said again. And then I figured that the dog was probably just like everybody else in the world, and then he wouldn't want to get called by, and he would, would want to get called by a name. Well, I didn't know what his name was, so I just said the first thing that came into my head. I said, come here, Winn-Dixie. And that dog came trotting right over to me, just like he'd been doing it his whole life. The manager sat up and he gave me a hard stare, like maybe I was making fun of him. It's his name, I said, honest. The manager said, don't you know not to bring a dog into the grocery store? Yes, sir, I told him. He got in by mistake. I'm sorry, it won't happen again. Come on, Winn-Dixie, I said to the dog. I started walking and he came following along behind me as I went out of the produce department and down the cereal aisle and past all the cashiers and out the door. Once we were safe outside, I checked him over real careful. He didn't look, he didn't look that good. He was big but skinny and you could see his ribs and there were ball patches all over in places where he didn't have any fur at all. Mostly he looked like a big piece of old brown carpet that had been left out in the rain. You're a mess, I told him. I bet you don't belong to anybody. He smiled at me. He did that thing again where he pulled back his teeth and showed his lips and showed his teeth. He smiled so big it made him sneeze. It was like he was saying, I know I'm a mess. Isn't it funny? It's hard not to immediately fall in love with a dog who has a good sense of humor. Come on, I told him. Let's go see what the preacher has to say about you. And the two of us, me and Winn-Dixie, started walking home. Chapter 2. That summer that I found Winn-Dixie was also the summer that me and the preacher moved to Naomi. Uh, Florida. Okay. That summer I found Win Dixie was also the summer me and the preacher moved to Naomi, Florida, so he could be a new preacher at the Open Arms Baptist Church of Naomi. My daddy is a good preacher and a nice man, but sometimes it's hard for me to think about him as my daddy because he spends so much time preaching or thinking about preaching or getting ready to preach. And so in my, in my mind, I think of him as the preacher. Before I was born, he was a missionary in India, and that's how I got my first name. But he calls me by my second name, Opal, because that was his mother's name, and he loved her a lot. 
Anyway, while me and Winn-Dixie walked home, I told him how I got my name, and I told him how I just moved to Naomi, and I also told him about the preacher and how he was a good man, even if he was too distracted with sermons and prayers and suffering people to go to the grocery store. But you know what, I told Winn-Dixie? You are a suffering dog, so maybe he will take you to you right away. Maybe he'll let me keep you. When Dixie looked up at me and wagged his tail, he was kind of limping like something was wrong with one of his legs, and I have to admit he stunk bad. He was an ugly dog, but already I loved him with all my heart. And when we got to the Friendly Corners trailer park, I told Win Dixie that he had to behave right and be quiet because this wasn't an all-adult trailer park, and the only reason I got to live in it was because the preacher was a preacher and I was a good, quiet kid. I was what Friendly Corners trailer park manager Mr. Alfred called an exception. And I told Winn-Dixie he had to act like an exception too. Specifically, I told him not to pick any fights with Mr. Alfred's cats or Mrs. Detweiler's little yappy Yorkie dog, Samuel. Winn-Dixie looked up at me while I was telling him everything and I swear he understood. Sit, I told him when we got to my trailer and he sat right down. He had good manners. Stay there, I told him, I'll be right back. The preacher was sitting in the living room working at this little fold-out table. He had paper spread all around him and he was rubbing his nose, which always meant he was thinking hard. Daddy, I said. Hmm, he said back. Daddy, do you know how you always tell me that we should help those less fortunate than ourselves? Mm-hmm, he said, and he rubbed his nose and he looked at his papers. Well, I said, I found a less fortunate at the grocery store. Is that right, he said. Yes, sir. I told him I stared at the preacher real hard. Sometimes he reminded me of a turtle hiding inside of its shell in there thinking about things and not ever sticking his head out into the world. Daddy, I was wondering, could this less fortunate, could could he stay with us for a while? Finally, the preacher looked up at, the preacher looked up at me. Opal, he said, what are you talking about? I found a dog, I told him, and I want to keep him. No dogs, the preacher said. We've talked about this before. You don't need a dog. I know it, I said. I know I don't need a dog, but... This dog needs me, look, I said. And I went to the trailer door and I hollered, Win Dixie! Win Dixie's ears shot up in the air and he grinned and he sneezed and he came limping up the steps and into the trailer and he put his head right in the preacher's lap, right on top of a pile of papers. The preacher looked at Win Dixie. He looked at his ribs and his matted up fur and the places where he was bald. The preacher's nose wrinkled up. Like I said, that dog smelled pretty bad. When Dixie looked up at the preacher, he pulled back his lips and he showed the preacher all of his crooked yellow teeth and he wagged his tail and he knocked some more of the preacher's papers off the table and then he sneezed some more and, some, and the papers fluttered to the floor. What did you call this dog? The preacher asked. When Dixie, I whispered. I was afraid to say anything too loud. I could see that when Dixie was having a good effect on the preacher. He was making him poke his head out of his shell. Well, said the preacher, he's a stray if I ever seen one. He put down his pencil, he scratched Win Dixie behind the ears. And less fortunate, too, that's for sure. Are you looking for a home? The preacher asked real soft to Win Dixie. Win Dixie wagged his tail. Well, said the preacher, I guess you found one. All right, we will pick up. That is chapters one and two. We will pick up with chapter three tomorrow and find out some more adventures for Opal and Win Dixie in Because of Win Dixie by Kate D. Camilla.